Welcome to the Professional Arena League, weekly scrim number three. I'm Scourge of the Server, and I'm going to be your caster today. Uh, we've got a really exciting lineup today, this week. We've got Airman Core, AC. We've got a Total Recoil, TXR, Das and Fold, DA, and the Iron Wolves. Now, before we start, let's uh, introduce our uh, cast here we have today. We've got uh, Tav as my co-caster. We have uh, Macon as our head official, Vengeance D on production. Um, P14 and the boss are our officials this week. Now let's uh, take a look at our bracket and see how the teams are facing off today. Well, I guess the that's first my bracket. Cue. Maybe, maybe not. Go for it. No, if you want to do it. In our first bracket, we've got AC versus TXR, which will be our first matchup tonight. Next up, we've got TIW versus BA. Matches are going to be one round, winner take all. The arena starts in the neutral capture state. Teams fight for the capture. If the base is captured, the match ends. If neither team captures the base in 20 minutes, the winner of the team holding the most influence over the base. Uh, the two bracket winners face off to be the champion of the PAL weekly th uh, number three. Now, PAL rules are in effect, which Tab is now going to explain. All right. What's up, Scorch? So, the main rules that we got going on here are... First one is, there's no smoke grenades of any type. You have no vehicles, no ground or air. No shotguns. No underbarrel of any kind. No jackhammer, no MCG, no lasher. There's no flipping cheeseburgers, so no maxes. You got no darts, no motion sensors, no spawn beacons. You can't have any sort of fun with enemy sunders, so no running up to them. You can only spawn in your own Sunders, nowhere else on the map. You're not allowed to go in those areas going up to the Sunders, so no bad touching all around them. And there's no fun policing, so guys, there's no, no destroying Sunders at all. And that's pretty much the rules. No force multipliers, infantry only. Should be a lot of fun. Oh, no smoke grenades, which means uh, the drinking and chat should be at a minimum, but hopefully the matches are entertaining enough. And these are, you know, like I said, typical PAL rules, no multipliers, infantry only, without spawn camping. There are zebras out there that are looking for uh, any sort of violations, and if people get caught, they will be disqualified. So, you know, the officials are going to be up on the walls like prison guards, making sure all these guys are dying for amusement, but doing so honorably. I'm also informed that uh, rockets will be banned from the next week. However, this week they are allowed. Now, with that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at the base for today's competition. So I'm being informed that we should not have much silence here. We're actually supposed to be talking to these fine individuals. So let's keep doing it. Uh, we do have some really good teams here. You did say that. Uh, I'm extremely looking forward to the DATIW match. Um, you know, see what kind of sweet tactics they can come up with to try to establish dominance. You know, maybe there will be terrain used. We don't really know. See how it goes. 
hopefully there won't be any funny stuff going on. But the first match is, of course, AC against TXR. Now, AC is... They're a pretty old school outfit, you know, they come from PS1, just like our own outfit does. Uh, they came off the Emerald server. They were really good then. They are actually known for their pilots, which is a little bit different for now, because they have some of the best infantry play in the game. And being this is infantry only, single squad, this should be like right in their wheelhouse for whatever type of competition they want to do. However, they are quite new to the competitive scene. So there may be a little bit of a, a weakness there, a little bit of vulnerability for them actually losing a match because they're not quite ready if you know they haven't been doing as much practicing or scrams as some of these other outfits have. Which yeah, is uh, cool. TXR is a prior uh, weekly champion of the previous uh, PAL Weekly. And they've been in the game for quite a while. Yeah, so TXR, you know, that on paper AC might be a little bit of a juggernaut compared to them. But TXR has been competing a lot. Uh, they did Community Clash, they've done prior you know, PAL Weeklies. They've, they've done a lot of scrims. They've really been getting everything together for them to actually make a, a name for themselves on the competitive scene. So while they might be a little bit outclassed, I do give them a puncher's chance to, uh, you know, take take AC out for this, this brief moment where AC might be a little bit vulnerable. So uh, make it. Are, are the outfits ready? They are. Absolutely ready. And uh, they're rather ready to go right now. Trying to shoot the people on the top. All right, countdown is going to start. We're going to have a one-minute countdown, and then the match will begin. So scorch. Now that we got yes. like a minute here, while we're waiting, how do you see this going down? Well, uh... see you against TXR. Looking at the, where we see most of them uh, before the match starts, it looks like AC's predominantly going to start in the south side and TXR are in the north side. And uh, as we know, the C building is somewhat of a, a linchpin over the map. Yeah, it should be interesting to see what kind of tactics uh, TXR actually has coming out of the north here. Uh, like I said, they've, they've done a lot of scrims, so they should should know how important the southern side of this base is, but maybe because they have the actual northern sunder replacement that they feel like they do. You know, less of a, a a problem starting off if they're actually in the north. And match is live. Immediately we see Airman Corps going uh, straight towards the C building with their whole team. TXR going all the way to D. Also trying to split off and uh, snag A. We've got uh, AC now moving up through the middle to uh, B. Taking mostly the top, sending one or two guys through the bottom. Well, AC at the start actually had a couple of people in the middle of the bottom. Tried to slow down the TXR push. I don't think they were very successful, but they did knowledgeable the back then. If you hang people up, you actually Yeah, it looks like the, the majority of our fighting right now are, is uh, happening at the bottom floor of D. Or you can see a group of a uh, couple TXR medics chain resin. Looks like Airman Corps still has the, uh, the advantage. Having the staircase secure. I hope Taropa feels not watching this. Is he actually has a sniper on top of the sea boat? Can't imagine it's going to be very effective. But yeah, I'd, I'd hate to set the precedent. It seems curiously enough we're not seeing uh, any light assault play from either team. Both teams dominantly going with just the, you know, the uh, the meat and cheese heavy assault medic. It looks like TXR is doing a pretty solid push out of the southern area and. AC didn't really have much of a defense set on top of the roof besides that lone sniper, like I said. 
is actually down there. That's the TXR is actually coming in now from the south side, and they are putting a lot of pressure on the city. AC still has the, uh, the, the higher ground here, but uh, it looks like TXR might be able to push in. start to hold this C building, they might be able to make more of a presence in B and A. But until they do, it's a bit of a lost cause. Especially without it. Might as well try to kind of scout and do some extra play. Still a pitch battle going on with lots of dying and resin, but it looks like uh, EC has pulled out ahead. Got the point back. Well, as I say that, more TXR. Well, the longer you actually have a pitched fight building without people on the roof covering the spawn entrances, the, this team with the Southern Sunder is actually going to have a massive advantage in taking AC building back. That's kind of what we saw here with AC. Well, it's like uh, this is a dire situation for TXR right now, and they've got a complete shutout. If they can't contest or flip a point, then it's going to go in about a minute 40 here. This is kind of the danger of uh, not having the C building, is that uh, the C building just has such a commanding position for the I'd like to see TXR actually move more to the, the lower level of B as compared to just trying to always run across this up top. They are pretty successful right now, they are taking B, but it's, it's so much easier to actually make a presence in B if you're not running into NG turrets. Yeah, I'm fire coming from the roof of C. It looks like uh, AC had a lot of casualties, but they're just going to reinforce back into C. Uh, fortify that up. You know, wait for TXR to move and, you know, try and, uh, try and get a wipe on them and then push out. So do you... Er AC's doing a very good job of still holding on to C, and not letting them go. Although, admittedly, TXR is not really trying to make them push, they're just trying to hold on to B right now. But it would be yeah. nice to see AC send one or two guys in that northern spawn. I see actually two guys right now. Hopefully, they go in the bottom of B. And you can just send one guy in B and just subscribe higher. Looks like TXR isn't doing so hot, they got really really bogged down on the uh, upper level of trying to get into B. It's just so hard to push in there when there's, you know, rockets, concussions. Big res grenade going off outside B. Clean it up a little bit here. It's so hard to push into B, though, when you're top level. You can't break anywhere. There's only one door from here. Because every other angle's covered. And we've, as you can see, there's uh, even a couple AC people trying to flank around from the uh, the staircase behind A. Just able to take pot shots in the back. Well, one thing I'm really noticing here is that AC actually had a light source because they'd be able to have that extra angle in all the spots. Yeah, there's uh, you haven't seen any light assault play from either team. It's kind of a shame, like, I'm not a huge fan of Light Assault personally most of the time, but this pace is actually pretty much ready-made for it. And it's excellent positions for it, such as not top of the deep building. They don't even have to necessarily kill people, it's just spotting and letting that information get out there to where it really is. Looks like uh, TXR is actually making a bit of a comeback here. It seems they, uh... They got a bit of a wipe on AC and uh, have managed to get A and uh, D pretty securely in their hands for now. Yeah, AC is a little bit They have a couple guys here coming in. They're not actually going to the building. They're going to D from that lower doorway to make a play on it. But if they're sitting around outside trying to you know, do this peak shot, like they're doing right now, 
it's not going to be very effective. You're just going to die. At the same time, AC is not really making any plays in the A building either, even though they've been controlling B. Well, at this rate, uh, the ball is in uh, Kickstarter's court. You know, they they got to react more than uh, AC does. AC can more or less just keep C fortified and just wait for. Uh, Wait for an opportunity to get a, a full wipe on the enemy team and just you know push down cab everything, which would pretty much immediately end the match at this rate. So AC is is moved into D, which is good. I hope they don't have a bunch of guys sitting there because it might be for a bunch of trap if you're actually trying to hold it. But holding that point, you know, it keeps that clock moving. Looks like we actually have a couple TXR guys uh, are down on the B point. This may be AC's chance to uh, push and flip the, all the points and uh, secure a victory here. Yeah, the feeling this match is about to be over just because they have the, the line of A, B, and C. And if you have that, then it's just contain them and keep lookout to the spawns and be good to go. Yeah, TXR has uh, been able to push in with their whole team to take D back, but. By the time they get uh, to A, the roll that's fired that's coming in from the B point, so we can see. Here it may be too late for them. One thing that I'm not really seeing at all, you know, I've mentioned a couple times, is there's not much lower level play. There's a couple TXR guys running around right now, but the majority of the firefight for the last 30 seconds has all been on the other level. That seems like a good way to go, but it just gets a shot. Yeah, I, I can easily see why teams would be afraid of the, the low ground. I mean, you get engaged from someone above, you know, you get into kind of a head glitch situation where you can't hit them. And that's it. AC wins round one. Good job by AC. They, they did hold it together right at the end. Got the points and got that clock moving. They had a good start and a good finish. Now the middle time where they weren't really doing a whole lot, it seemed like it's just a little bit of lack of experience with the map and, and utilizing light assaults and getting proper cover off the C building. If yeah, once they pick that, that was, up uh... though, that team is going to be monstrous. Oh yeah, certainly. I, I think a lot of that, that mid-game was just, you know, kind of overextension. You know, got a little ahead of themselves, tried to camp out in D. You know, got spread out, and then C started being contested. But yeah, uh, for most of the match, they, they held C, which was the right choice. And yeah, just from there, have, they uh, had a commanding position. The very large advantage of having that Southern Sunder, too, which just it makes C such a... Um, an easier point to hold. If it you does. have that, then you can you pretty much just win. <laughs>